Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at this uh, Tanaka blower. It's a backpack leaf blower. Let me uh, reverse this around if I can. I don't do many of these live things. So here we go. There's a Tanaka TBL-7800R. Tanaka's, from my understanding, I just lost the voice recorder when I was doing the live broadcast on YouTube there with this. So yeah, Tanaka's from what I understand are pretty good. Sounds like they're Japanese, but anyway, I'm kind of recording an audio back over this as I'm looking around explaining how I'm going to troubleshoot this thing. And uh, so we are looking for the three things, of course, you know, the compression, the ignition and fuel. So on first glance at this thing, everything looks like it's in one piece and in pretty good shape. And I'm going to take a look at what do I do here first? I kind of forget here, I'm kind of watching what I'm doing. So I'm going to come over here to the carburetor and check out the, all the gunk that's on there. And I come to find out uh, they were probably shutting this down by choking it out. And if that's just drawing more fuel up around the carburetor, that's possibly uh, what could be causing all this sooty stuff to be on the side there. But it looks like there might be some kind of leak. The air filter was totally toast on this thing. I'm checking the fuel lines here and making sure they look decent. It looks like one of them has been replaced and they actually look to be in pretty good shape. They're not brittle or anything like that. Maybe that black one could probably be shortened and um, reattached. Just uh, leave a little flex in there because this thing does move around as the engine's running. It wobbles a little bit, but I didn't do that. I just want to see if it runs. So I'm going to take a look and see if it'll start. Just going to try to give it a couple pulls, see what happens. So I'm priming it. The bulb is up underneath the carburetor on this one. And I'm checking out to see the switch. Okay, pulling the switch back on this one actually turns it on. So back on the switch is on and I have the throttle closed. So the trigger on the handle is not pulled. And I'm going to get, put it on choke. Pulled a few times, I wasn't getting anything. So I did this for a while. So now I'm taking in, uh, spraying some carburetor cleaner in there, carb spray, whatever. I'm gonna give it another shot. And as I was pulling the rope, you could feel that there was decent compression on there, so I'm not really worried about compression, really. Sometimes uh, this guy that I'm that owns this backpack blower said he let somebody else borrow this, and you never know someone might have put straight fuel into it, and it's easy to burn up the piston and rings when you do that. But it doesn't seem like this one is having any compression issues. Really, it's pretty hard to pull. So I got the carburetor cleaner in there, and it really didn't do anything. So I'm gonna go to step two or actually step three because we know it's getting fuel and it's not doing anything we know it has compression so the next thing to check is uh, spark <clears throat> and so I'll be taking this plug off do I already have that air filter cover off so it was just toast it looks like I already took that off but I have a picture of it here that I will show you, and that's what it looked like, this right here, and it was just crumbly, falling apart completely. Let me take a look at the plug. So I got the plug out, and I'm just going to uh, stick my finger about three quarters of the way covering the uh, spark plug hole. Pulled a few times just to push out any uh, excessive fuel that's in there because the plug was really fouled up and nasty and I went and got the air hose and it wasn't working so I had to go do that.
Okay, I blew that all off, and now I'm kind of jimmying the uh, spark plug tester here by putting a wrench on the cylinder, top of the cylinder, metal part, metal to metal, and then I have the spark plug plugged in. The on-off switch is in the on position, and I'm looking at the gap at the spark plug there to see if there's anything going on. And there wasn't that I could see in the light here. So I'm going to be taking it into the garage and doing the same checks. So I took that into the garage and checked for spark and there was spark. It was just a fouled plug. Okay, and I got it running here. And I'm sorry that there's no uh, sound on this, but uh, I did get it running. And um, yeah, there it goes. It's smoking a little bit. There it goes. And I jimmied around with the uh, on off with the choke. Sometimes you do that and it loosens things up, loosens up that diaphragm, gets it going. Um, there's another YouTuber that does this. <coughs> the lady, I forget her name. Uh, small engine chick or something and she uh, demonstrated how she just lets it run wide open I got the blower going wide open right now and you just uh, put it back down to full choke let it run wide open for a few seconds full rpm and then you choke it real quick just keep doing that choke it until it almost dies and then uh, take the choke back off and this uh, Chicanic, that's her name, uh, she's saying she does this when someone comes in for its tune-up or start of the season after it's been sitting all winter. You do this for about five minutes. It's supposed to really loosen things up in there. Eh, pretty cool trick. I don't know. I, I guess it's worked once or twice for me working on these things. I don't work on them every day either, but uh, sounds like a cool trick. So I got that run in, the air cleaner was really jacked up, and then come to find out the on-off switch was not working on this machine. So I had to choke it just to kill the engine because the on-off switch was not working. And I um, went for the handle. I started digging around in the handle for a switch. There's not a switch. There is a mechanical switch in the handle, but all it does is ground the coil. So there's a wire going up to the handle. And... Um, then another one coming back for ground. And what had happened was up underneath the gas tank there, there were four wires hanging out. Each one had a male, female uh, fitting. And that was uh, basically what it was for the uh, on off switch. And I just uh, re spliced and uh, put terminal lens on those wires and plugged them back in and that worked. And then I uh, put a new air filter on there and it ran just great. So that was the extent of this repair. I got a picture up here of what the wires looked like uh, before I spliced them. I just figured out which wire was uh, going to ground from the, um, from the handle switch and then, uh, you know, which one was uh, going up to the uh, coil pack and just uh, plugged them in, respectively, and got it all fixed up. So that's, uh, that was a pretty easy fix.